Hi, I'm Mary Chibb with Bentley Systems. Today I want to show you the next step in the tower model I have been working on with Architect Topany Tower. This is the fifth video in this series. In the first four videos, we used Bentley's generative components to create the basic geometry of the tower, and then a stacking model that drives the floor manager for Open Buildings Designer, and then more detailed typical floor models with glass skin, slabs, and columns. Today, we will take all the geometry we created and assemble the final tower model. But first, I'm going to go back to the original tower geometry model and tweak the design a bit, and then follow those changes through our models. That's the reason we built this in generative components in the first place. So I've now attached a preliminary 2D site plan, and you can see that we need to adjust the footprint of this tower. So I'm going to start by turning off the original sketch, and that's just an image attached. And now we can just see our 2D site plan, and we can see we need to make some adjustments. So I'm going to start with the central core, and that's my X and Y sliders here. And I'm just going to reduce this a bit to something that's a little more appropriate for the size of this site. And we'll go ahead and update those changes. Next, I'll resize the local cores. So again, we're going to reduce those a little bit. And we'll also reduce these least steps on each of the wings. And for this version, we're actually going to, to make each of these wings identical. So we'll have a much more symmetrical tower. And let's go ahead and apply those changes. And once that updates, I can see that I will want to move those wings into the corners of the site. And in order to make sure that those wings are spaced symmetrically around the core, I'm actually going to edit the T values rather than just move them freely around my ellipse. So I'm going to go to my graph, and these are the, the four points, and we're, we'll adjust the T values here. So that we can control that a little more accurately. So now we have some geometry that is much more symmetrical. It fits within our site limits and works with the, the core and leasing depths that the designer is looking for. So let's go ahead and, and save that option. And then we'll go take a look at the stacking model. Now, when I open up the stacking model, we can see that the tower geometry, the new smaller footprint, has already been applied. And so we get already a, a more slender stacking model. We're also going to make some changes. Let me go ahead. I'm going to just for now take the twist away. And we're actually going to change our floor to floor height a little bit. And we're going to actually increase the number of floors. Mr. Tallow wants to go a bit higher. And 
I'll just take the scale out of there for now and let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now we have a more slender, taller tower. And then let's put a little bit of a taper back in. And we could try a little bit of a twist. So that's kind of fun, but Mr. Tallow likes just straight up with a little bit of a taper. Very elegant ability. So let's go ahead and save that option. And of course, I'll play the rest of the transaction so that we update the floor manager. And now all I need to do is open up each of the individual floor files and export the changes to the DGN files. So I'll start with the lobby floor and work my way up.
All right, now all of our floor files have been updated and exported. Did you notice on those garden floors I added some plant material? I did that using a GC cell node, so I simply attach those using a GC node so they're attached along the perimeter of those arcs and if and when that tower geometry changes then those cells move with them. So now I've created a new file and named it amaster.dgn. This will simply be my master model and I'm just going to start referencing those various floor models. So I've already brought in the 2D site drawing. Next I will bring in the lobby floor and we'll just work our way up. So I'm going to open the references dialog. Just go ahead and attach the lobby floor. I'll attach it coincident. And we can see that there on the ground on our site. Next, I'll attach a low rise floor. Now that actually went in right on my zero elevation because that's where I built it. So all we need to do is select it and change its reference to elevation. And I can get that information from my floor selector. So I just look at the first low rise floor as it, it is at elevation 68. And that's what I'll put in here. And then I really just need that same exact model 69 more times to make up the 70 floors of the low rise portion of the tower. So I'll just copy that reference 69 times. Now, before I do that, I'm going to give it a logical name and I'm going to use LR for low rise and then we'll just do one. And then I'm going to use my copy reference. I'm going to make 69 copies. And we'll just select a data point and we make sure we're copying vertically. And I'm going to go 17 feet. That's the floor to floor height we currently have. And there we go. That's our 70 low rise floors. And we can see those here now in our reference dialog. And they, the logical name keeps numbering so that it now matches the floor number. And I'm going to go ahead and attach my sky lobby same thing i need to change its elevation so that's this one here and I'll scroll down through my floor selector till i find the sky lobby and that's at 1258 And I'm going to give it a logical name, SK-1, since that's the first sky lobby. Then we'll go do the same with the mid-rise floors. And I'm going to name that one MR71. And again, we'll do a copy reference. I'm going to make 69 copies again. We'll go 17 feet. So there are our 70 mid-rise floors and we'll attach our second sky lobby And that has an elevation of 2482.
and finally we'll attach that high rise portion now that's all one model because of the taper we built that as a single block of floors go ahead and attach that and that was built at the proper elevation so it should come right in at the right location so there we go that is our tower all assembled and now that we have a master model we would be ready we could start creating floor plans or sections or elevations of our tower and also remember we have BIM data on that model we've got columns and slabs and we could uh, do schedules and reports based on that but if you remember we also had those garden floors so the designer wanted to be able to come in here and change some of the typical floors into garden floors where he could really pull the, the glass back and have some gardens as an amenity to the tower and so Again, we wanted to be flexible about how we do that, and really the simplest thing to do here is just switch references in and out. And so, for instance, if in this low-rise portion we wanted to have four floors that were gardens and maybe each one was on a different wing, um, we would just simply start switching out references. So if we equally space that, we're going to put the first one at floor 13. So I'll just come down to my LR13 floor. I'm going to double click, go browse, and instead of the A floor low, I'm going to use the A floor low A. So this will have a garden on wing A. Go ahead and attach that. And every time I put in a garden, I'm going to display off the floor above because those garden floors are actually double height. You can see that down there. You can see those trees coming through. We'll go ahead and do the next one, which will be at floor 26. So again, we're just going to browse and select low B. We'll select OK. And then again, I'm going to just display off the floor above. I don't want to detach that floor because if we were to move these gardens around, we want to try them on different floors, then I don't have to, to reattach these. I'll just turn them back on. Go up to 39. We'll make that low C. And finally, floor 52, we will make So that sets up our master model. From here, we can create drawings, schedules, and even renderings. As changes are made to the design, they will be made in the generative components files and then flow through to this master model and ultimately any drawings or schedules that are set up. I hope you've enjoyed this series and I hope you've learned as much watching it as I did putting it together. This completes the initial design of the skyscraper. I hope you found this video series informative. Thank you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.